Testing one two, testing one two. Microphone check one two one two. All right, I'm recording. Yep, red lights on. It's it's recording. Social equity as a mechanical engineer focuses on the ability to say that anything that I design or implement can be used by all. When that doesn't happen is when people feel left behind. You know, decisions were made in the 1950s in the way that we built our national highway system that encouraged a certain type of growth in the suburbs. This was not necessarily a good thing for social equity. When completed, this network is expected to carry about 20% of the total traffic in the nation. After you've asked these questions and understand the answers and have implicated the answers, you must always go back after your invention is made and reiterate and see if you incorporated their concerns. Based on those responses, then you'll know if you've had an inclusive design. For example, uh in, in USA, we have about 16 million adults who cannot drive because they are visually impaired or other disabilities. And with self-driving cars, they have the freedom of mobility. They can choose to go anywhere they want, at any time they want. Well, I've never been in Austin, Texas. Now I'm driving in Austin, Texas. If I'm developing a kidney, if I'm developing a liver, if I'm developing a heart, the, those technologies, those, those organs, should be available to anyone who needs them. To me, social equity means equal opportunity. I can't guarantee, and I don't think anyone can guarantee, equal outcomes. But equal opportunity is critical. We can't simply isolate ourselves in a silo and say, well, I'm only responsible for designing the beams and columns in this building without really understanding what the building is going to be used for, how people will interact with it, what types of uses uh, we're really promoting with the work that we're doing. I can't just be sitting behind a computer making a product think this is cool. I need to be able to communicate why I made it, who it's for, and then I need to be able to fight for getting it to the people I made it for. So that's all in communication. Learn to engage with multiple parties and stakeholders in every project that you do to understand their needs and understand the eventual use of the projects that we're building, because we have to understand their impacts on the communities that these buildings will exist in. So when one talks about the art of communication, it's not public speaking. The art of communication is listening for what's said, but also listening for what's not said. The areas of work that I am involved in as a, as a design professional that I think has a really important impact on society is the area of affordable housing. We've had the privilege to work on many projects where we've taken these old buildings, changing their use from what was an old textile mill that had been abandoned into housing, affordable housing, for the people that live and work and play in those communities. So a few years back, uh, my organization uh, was involved in a Sun Valley multi-benefit project. Sun Valley is a community that is mainly commercial and industrial based with low income residential and they had a very huge, very serious flooding problem. And the simple solution would be for us to go in there and simply design a storm drain that would collect the storm water and redirect it into our flood control channels and then wash it out to the ocean. That would have been the easy solution, but we decided to ask the community what it was that they wanted. And what we got out of it was that they wanted ballparks. At the end of the day, what the community got was a flood protection project that allowed for water conservation, that allowed for improved water quality, that restored habitat, and that gave them a place to congregate and be safe.
historically. Engineering has a diversity, equity, and inclusion problem. When I started studying engineering, there were very few women in engineering. In fact, my high school guidance counselor told me that women could not be engineers. People don't pay me for the package I come in. My clients pay me for how I use the gray matter between my ears. From a personal note, coming out of high school, I was told that I should go to school to be a carpenter. That was the job that was told to me by my guidance counselor, but I was smart and I understood mathematics and I love science and I became a mechanical engineer. So I, I recommend that for anyone that uh, enjoys working with their hands, working with the computers and working with your brain. Diversity is really important. You know, we need engineers that are fair representation, cross-section of society. In order to do good work, we have to listen to them. Engineers need to recognize that our work as the designers of infrastructure and planners of infrastructure has a direct impact on society. Personally, I don't believe there's a way for us to, to garner social equity across this world without an engineer involved. Across the world, we've got roughly eight billion people, seven and a half billion people. Currently, about four and a half, five billion of those people are connected to the internet. What we need to do as engineers is we need to ensure that we design ways for, to bring those folks online. As our ethical code, we need to help human life. And that, in my opinion, is something that we have to do. And it cannot be done without an engineer um, driving it. So we definitely, as engineers, need to think about that in our decision-making, everything that we do, because that's the kind of impact that we have and can have towards a positive future. Peace. Uh, stop recording. Right there. You can hit the button one time.